I think the use of stone is underrepresented in the current LEED certification. We need to expand in LEEDs our presence in stone building. We think we should be celebrating the use of stone in terms of green building as having the lowest embodied energy material out there. I was amazed, and I did just a little research for this. I tried to find a stone showroom in the United States that was LEED certified and could not. Durability then is one of the things that I don't think we're doing, we're, we're doing a good enough job in terms of selling the public on in terms of green building. In fact, uh, I don't know any other materials that has an age. I don't think there was a vinyl age. Uh, but in fact, there was a stone age. Uh, and those buildings are so durable that they still exist today. The AIA, the American Institute of Architects, has implemented what they call the 2030 initiative. By 2015 in Austin, in, by 2015 in Austin, in just five years from now, the building code will read, the new energy code for Austin will read, all new buildings must be zero net energy compatible by 2015 and zero net energy by 2030. All new state office buildings have to be LEED certified. All city buildings have to be LEED certified. Uh, all schools have to be LEED certified. Uh, we can begin to see that the increasing reliance on LEEDs as third party certification. Now, having said that, uh, I think the use of stone is underrepresented in the current LEED certification. How do we sell more stone? And what I've done is to outline a number of technologies that we've used and that we've developed and carried over to stonework that come from other industries, from aeronautical technologies, from things like scanning nuclear power plants, some really, really top shelf technology that we've been able to bring back into traditional stone masonry to do it faster, better, and cheaper in such a way you can get more stone on more projects. Now what makes this exceptional is this entire house with 2,800 square feet of stone was done in under three weeks. It's full thickness, it's full six inch thick stone, and it was done by three guys who had never done it before. What we're gonna go through today is taking natural stone from being just an artisan product and bring it into the CAD and BIM reality. The idea is to sell more stone, you don't try to make it something that is plasticized. You take the best thing that makes stone outstanding and you make it at a price that's lower and you can do in more volume. They're looking at this as an industry changing play where you can go out and you basically address every single aspect of a challenge of a market where if any consumer can choose, they choose stone. So why do they not always buy it? For every 3,500 people that retire from the craft every year, and this is US labor statistics, fewer than 250 go into the craft. So it's a dying art. And if the art dies, so does all our businesses. A year and a half ago, I was the keynote speaker at the National Union event in San Diego, and basically went out and we built a section of stone. I got up with a suit, put together what would take a mason a full day to do in five minutes, and, and it was silent in the room. And I thought, okay, I either better start running for the door, or maybe this is going good. And what happened, somebody got up and was like, take it apart and do it again. I, I can't believe you just did that. It's no secret, though, that MSHA has increased its enforcement uh, in recent years. Yeah. How many of you are seeing more citations than you ever did before? You know, uh, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Put them through their paces. Make them do the test by the book. I can tell you that they are going wild right now, writing high wall citations. And most of these inspectors don't know what they're looking at. I do understand what is in MSHA's policy because sometimes there are little nuggets in there that are get out of jail free cards for you. You have the right to counsel. They won't tell you that, but you know, you're absolutely out of your mind if you do a special investigation without having an attorney present because every one of these files is reviewed for criminal prosecution. And unlike OSHA, MSHA does not have to have an injury or an accident occur or a fatality in order to criminally prosecute. You know, you don't require to speak to MSHA. That, that's a fact. And if you do speak to them, everything can be used against you.
they, they try to chum you up, you know, they'll talk about hunting and fishing and Boy Scouts, and, and then they'll slip the zingers in there. Be attuned to that. They're not your friends. I don't think the members of Congress are really getting the full story about the economic impact of this, the jobs it's going to cost in their district, the inability for construction materials to meet the demands of the stimulus projects and everything else. And they're going to make it economically infeasible to, to mine and quarry our natural resources. It's just that simple, unless something is done. This is what's going on out there in the real world. We'd spend hours building go-karts out of scraps and ride them down a steep hill only to find out we forgot the brakes. <laughs> After running in the bushes a few times, we learned to solve the problem. We've got a bunch of real problem solvers in this room. I think that over 95% of people that are injured and killed in all facets of industry is from unsafe acts, period. The bottom line is, is that 34 is the lowest number of fatalities we've ever had, yet their citations are increasing substantially. We're starting to lose the balance. And you really need to be looking at this and thinking about it as to how we're going to make this, this work because it's going in a bad direction. Baseball players have rules, football players have rules, there's different people on the field, there's coaches, there's athletic trainers, then there's me, the spectator. I just eat peanuts and drink beer. I'm not in the game, I'm a spectator. This isn't a spectator sport, you're in the game. Because I was the first one that really went to the extent of implementing an organized presentation that dealt with a full day presentation for architects and delivering that message succinctly, accurately, and generically to an architectural community that was waiting and needed those continuing education points. If you're not taking advantage of this opportunity of helping and getting this message out to the architectural specifier community that understand, needs to understand more about stone, you're missing a great benefit of the association. So we have knowledge to impart to help an architect do their job. So an architect, a specifier, a designer, a spec writer, by feeling, touching it, getting in your environment, they understand what we do differently and that impresses them and impacts their use of stone. They're not afraid of it anymore. There's a lot of contractors we've worked with that don't know the first thing about stone that could really use this information. Uh, one question I get asked a lot when I talk about this is whether sustainability is a fact. You know, is it here to stay? Is it something we're going to be dealing with or is it just the topic of the day? There's different kinds of eco-labels and I won't go into a long-winded explanation of, of the different types of eco-labels, but suffice it to say that this is really the major way that information is communicated to architects and decision makers in the green building movement. The true utility of a label is that it, it testifies to the environment, environmental characteristics of your product so that an architect doesn't have to become an expert. This, these are shots from Greenville, I think, two years ago. And um, you know, one thing that's missing up here is the stone industry. The concrete industry was here in spades. The brick industry was here in spades. All of your competitors were here, except stone. So what does the stone industry have to do? So, uh, to kind of get involved with sustainability because right now you're kind of invisible. Today I'd like to announce basically that we're going to be launching a, a development process for stone, uh, for a standard, an environmental product standard for stone. What this label says is that when you sit in front of an architect and they say, well, how do, you, how do I know that your material is sustainably produced? You can say, because we went through a two year long standard development process that included government, academia, and international organizations, what social means is, what are we doing to make the world a better place? You know, is there a charity that the industry is working on? Are we all involved in Habitat for Humanity? That becomes part of, so that's the second leg of the stool. What, you know, it's called that when you hear social responsibility, what is our industry doing to make the world a better place?